and welcome to another episode of Epic Events. My name is Candace Davis, and I'm the Director of Event Programming and Creative Services here at VFairs. We have a great episode today for all of you planners and organizers out there who conduct trade shows. My guest on today's show is Jim Cermak. He's a professional trainer, a trade show coach, and podcast host of the Trade Show University podcast. Jim, welcome to the show. Candace, it is an honor to be here. I am so excited. Uh, it's I, I, I know these are big shoes. Uh, your guests in the uh, past several months have just been spectacular. I have, so I am I'm honored to be here and excited. Well, thank you. You're you're one of those incredible guests. So I appreciate you being <laughs> on the show. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm excited for us to dive in to uh, these four steps of mastering booth flow that yeah. you pretty much are known as the king of trade shows. So <laughs> I have so many questions to ask you. Um, before we you know, started recording this episode together, we were talking a little bit about trade shows. And you know from just my story that I grew up going to trade shows. Yeah. I grew up working them and uh, that it's in my DNA. So I have so many questions to ask you um, yeah. cause you go to so many of them, you know, so much. I mean, look at all of your, look at all of your badges behind. Oh you. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, <laughs> my battle <that's> scars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Um, but before we dive into all the fun, you know, trade show, topics that we'll be covering today. Where are you located in the world and why do you love trade shows so much? Oh, I am look, I'm in tropical Cleveland, Ohio and uh, <laughs> born and raised there. Uh, it is very not tropical today as we got the hammered with some snow, uh, but uh, born and raised here, love, love this area. It's a great, great place to raise a family. Uh, and why do I love trade shows so much? It all started, the very first trade show I went to was the Philadelphia Candy Show back in the early 90s. So uh, quite a while ago, I'm dating myself, uh, quite a while ago. And just the energy and the excitement, obviously there was all these candy uh, <laughs> candy vendors there, which was great. However, uh, it was the following trade show that was from a manufacturing standpoint uh, that, you know, heavy industry. And I went to that not expecting there to be the same energy, but there was. Everyone was excited to talk about their companies. I'm like, this is awesome. I love this. And then I started working and planning. And, and just over the years, I've just uh, fallen in love with them. I, I think they are the number one marketing tool available to a company, bar none. I, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely the best. And I can talk on that all day long. <laughs> but uh, So that's why I love trade shows. Wow, I'm really jealous that your first trade show was a candy trade show. Yeah. If any of those are, exist out there, I definitely want to go to one. Um, but I know of a big, um, you know, topic that's really close to your heart, specific to booth flow. And for a lot of planners and organizers who might be listening, um, I'm pretty sure there's a handful of them that don't know what that is exactly. I mean, when you think of booth flow. You can kind of guess of, of what it might be, and you're probably eight out of, eight out of nine, ten, you know, um, correct on that. But can you tell us specifically, just you know, from from your point of view, what is booth flow? Yeah, I guess I guess another way to think of booth flow is the attendee journey. When mm -hmm. when someone shows up at your booth, what do they experience? How do you take them? What is the journey that you take them down? And I think this more than anything else could be the make or break of the success at your show. I think more than the, the fancy displays, the big booths, the giveaways, all that stuff, how you take and how you treat and engage the attendee and take them through a journey is can make or break your success. So that it, it's really the attendee journey. That's uh, I guess probably the best way to put it that people would understand who haven't heard of the term booth flow. Yeah, and I'm sure there are probably, you know, hundreds of different types of, you know, pros and cons with booth flow. I mean, we, we could be here all day talking about oh, booth yeah. flow for sure. <laughs> I know today we wanted to focus on your top, you know, four tips at, you know, increasing, let's say, engagement. I know that's a big thing that planners yeah. and organizers are talking about, whether it be uh, an in-person event like a trade show or a virtual event, a trade show, yeah. um, a hybrid event, a trade show. Let's just use that you know, <laughs> use case specific to and talk about, you know, engagement um, and then that attendee, you know, um, journey and booth flow that, like you mentioned too. So with your, your first step, I mean, where do you start with booth flow? 
Well, and like you said, it's all about the engagement. So you have no mm-hmm. step number one is really to engage to start the journey. You've got to yeah. somehow get that person into the journey. Because how many people, if, if we've been an exhibitor before, how many people walk past your booth? They may look at your booth. You may say hello, and they don't stop. They just keep walking. So none of those people are are in the attendee journey. It's getting them into that, and and that's all about the engagement. So. If, you know, once they're at your booth, how do you engage them? And and that is that is the the critical first point. And for me, the the tip that I would say, you've got to have one or two really quick questions. One of the first question you ask somebody is something that's going to stop them in their tracks, just for a second. You know, it's a it doesn't have to be an open ended question. People a lot of times don't like getting asked open-ended questions right out of the gate that's going to make them think and 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 try to pontificate about (laughs) some sort of topic but give but give them something that could be it could even be a yes no question like for example uh if if you if v fairs was at a show and you were an exhibitor and you might say do you host events that's a quick yes no question that immediately qualifies the person and that's what you want to do you want to qualify them is do I even want to talk to this person or do I, do I want to, no, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm in maintenance. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. You know, and then you can let them go and let them get on their way, but you need to do something that's going to qualify them. So you know that when I take them into the journey, this is somebody I really want to talk to. So you, you want to do that quick qualification and then somehow get them to say, yeah, I'll talk to you. I will talk to you And don't be shy. I think a lot of times we're shy. Uh, mm-hmm. People are walking by. They look like they're busy. Oh, they're on their phone. Oh, they're, you know, whatever. And we're afraid to engage with them. We're afraid to talk to them. We're afraid we're, that we're going to come across as salesy. Mm-hmm. No, people are, the attendees are there to do business. They're there to find new solutions. And if you've got a solution for them, then you've got to be, I don't want to say aggressive, but you do have to put yourself out there and and talk to the person and say, excuse me, and grab their attention, even if they're not looking at you, if they're turned the other way, because if they go past your booth one time, they may never come past again. And that may be your next big customer. And if you do not take that advantage of getting them into your booth, then you may have just lost a a huge, huge opportunity. So again, step number one, engage to start that journey. It's all about that engagement, get those people into a conversation. Yeah. And I know that can be hard for a lot of people because if I'm on my phone and I'm walking past the booth and someone kind of, you know, says, Hey, I want to ask you a question. I mean, obviously I'm not going to just ignore them. Some people will, and they'll walk past and all that, but it's right. I mean, you do need to qualify the lead. And again, with these convention centers, you know, it's like a a football field in length and (laughs) they're not going to come back. Right. You're right. You know, unless another booth around you attracts them, you've you've lost out on a potential really good lead and maybe a big customer like you mentioned too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so again, don't be shy and mm-hmm. but have a good question. Don't this is some of the biggest mistakes I see people making is making that simple hello. How you doing? Oh my gosh, isn't the show great? Aren't you having fun in San Diego or Vegas or whatever city? And that is not going to make someone stop and talk to you mm-hmm. because I, they might say, yeah, or not at you, but they're just going to keep walking. You need something that's going to engage them. So mm-hmm. by by having that first question, like, do you plan or run trade shows or plan or run uh, events? Yes, I do. Oh, can would you like to see the most innovative event planning tool you've ever seen? Who is going to say no to that? And if they say no to that, you don't want to talk to them. <laughs> of course, I want to see the, the most innovative uh, planning tool I've ever seen. That's part of my job. If I say no to that, I'm, ah, what am I doing? What am I passing? So and now you've got them into a conversation and you start them down that journey. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So step number one is to um, really lead by engagement uh, efforts yeah. and kind of pull them into your booth. And um, 
I think a personality has a big thing to do with it as well. And tone, don't you think so? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah you've got to be friendly. You can't be overly aggressive. Uh, yeah. You've got to be engaging. You've got to be likable. You know, your appearance has a lot to do with it. your body language. Mm. Smile. <laughs> it's amazing how smiles can just draw people in. And so, yeah, you definitely want to. Uh, have that posture and have that uh, that appearance about you and that body language. It's really going to be inviting when you're asking your questions. But uh, when I said someone on their phone, if they're engaging in a conversation, you don't want to bother that. That's that's kind of rude. But but if they're just texting or looking at their phone, then yeah, absolutely, by all means, ask a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and okay, so that's step one. Yeah. What's uh, our step two? So step two is right up front. After you've, after you've got their attention, you start them into the journey, you need to capture the information that you want and need. Mm -hmm. Do that right up front. Don't wait till the end of your conversation because you may never get it. Mm -hmm. So whether that is scanning their badge, getting their business card, and, and understand if you're using a badge scanner, what information are you actually capturing? Mm -hmm. And it might be, might be, you know, a lot of the key information you need, but what else do you need? Brainstorm with your team and, and before the show and say, okay, what information do we want to capture? Think about your sales process. If you go on a sales call, what information do I want to know about that customer? If this is a legitimate prospect, I want to know, is this person a decision maker or at least can make the decision on the product or service that I want to talk to them about? Or is it, um, you know, if not, who are they in the decision making process? What's their sales cycle like? What is their, uh, and what's their budget if that's applicable? Whatever questions that you want to get answered, ask them up front. Of course, you can ask them 20 questions, but have three or four quick questions that you can further get down the journey. You could just say, hey, I've got a couple of questions because I don't want to bombard you with a lot of information, but I want to make sure I give you the information that you need. So then you ask those quick questions and people will take a minute to give you those questions. Just say, this will just take a minute. So whether that is, you know, doing it on a, on a kiosk or an, uh, you know, an iPad or even go old school with a, a form that you have printed out and have people write and you can show them the form, which one of these would you click? You know, would you check off and, and you could guide them through a form that you could take back. It doesn't matter what, what format you use, just do it, get that information up front before you start your conversation. So you don't waste time during the whole journey. And you, as you uh, present them with your product or service. So that's the, so number two is really capturing that key information right up front. Okay. Quick question for you. Yeah. Are you a fan of uh, prize giveaways at booths to attract more people? Say, hey, we're giving away, you know, an Apple Watch, uh, you know, end of day tomorrow when the show ends. Like, come back here at three o'clock, you know, to gather more people around and we're going to do a quick drawing live and then, you know, whatever it may be, some sort of prize. But are, are you a big fan of that as well? I am. And I am in the way that you described it. I, I call it like a double back, a double back promotion yeah. where you have, they, they've stopped at your booth and they've got to come back. And because mm -hmm. when they come back, then you have to take advantage of that time when they come back, because typically you have, you have, you are now drawing a small crowd of all the people that want to win that Apple watch or whatever uh, item that you're giving away. And it's got to be something of value. Otherwise, people are not going to come back if you're giving away, a, you know, a twenty-five dollar Amazon card. You might get a couple of people, but if you give something away of of substance, they will come back. And now all of a sudden, you're drawing a, a crowd. And what do crowds draw? More people. People want to know what is going on at that booth. That there, there's like thirty people standing at that booth where there's <laughs> nobody at any of the other booths. What's going on there? So yes, they'll, they'll get there, and then take your phone out and record have someone who is responsible at your booth to record what's going on and you can you can even go live on on you know linkedin or live on, on whatever social media platform that your uh your target audience is is really tuned into and take advantage of the energy and what's going on and 
and and record that get get uh reactions of people while they're standing there uh maybe get some a quick testimonials did you take a look at our uh, did you get a product demo okay what did you think of it and see if they'll they'll give you a quick testimonial you can get a year's worth of <laughs> of social media content in the course of a, a few minutes by doing something like that so i love that you brought that up and and I, yeah so i i'm a big fan i'm not a big fan of just getting uh you know, let's scan your badge to, to get, to win a, a watch or, or whatever, because now you're, you, you probably have scanned the badge of a lot of people who are not qualified. And all you're doing is giving your sales team or you, if that's you, a lot of unqualified people that you're going to be following up with. And it's just going to waste a lot of precious time after the show. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, a big fan, big fan. <laughs> yeah, big fan of prize giveaways at booths. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was just a little halftime in between the, you know, step two and step three. So <laughs> let's move on to step three. Absolutely. Step three is now guiding them through the journey. Figure out what is it that you want to tell them. And I guess the best way to do this, especially if you have, I don't care if you have one person, uh, but we'll, we're, let's talk about if you have multiple people at your booth. Everyone should have a role. And mm -hmm. I, the way I guide my clients, I tell people, look, let's set your booth up kind of like how a restaurant is set up. You know, if you uh, sit down restaurant, if you go to sit down restaurant, there's a front of front of house and back of house. Okay, so the front of house is that greeter that you meet, the maitre d. You've got uh, sir, you know, waiters, waitresses, a serving staff. You've got um, the bussers. You know, those are all the people that you see up front. And then you've got back of house. Oh, those are all the, the prep cooks, the, the, the line cooks, the master chefs. You've got, you know, the, the people that clean the dishes and, and all that. So all those people you don't see, but that, that create a lot of that magic that, that you have. So if you set up your boot the same way, you think of it, uh, like a restaurant. So if you've got a front of the booth, back of the booth, even though it's not te technically front of booth, back of the booth, but, but front of the booth would be your greeters. Who's engaging? You know, we just talked about engagement. Who is it that is out there in front engaging with the people? And then who is capturing that data? You know, taking, you know, like a, like a server taking an order. Who is mm -hmm. capturing that data? And then, uh, if they need a demo, that would be your, your back of the back of the booth uh, kind of people back of the house. So you have someone who's maybe your, your subject matter expert, uh, an engineer, a, you know, a very, a technical person who's going to take someone through a demo, a quick demo and try if, and if you're doing demos, uh, especially of, of software products and stuff, try to make them as quick as possible. <laughs> There's been times I've, I'm two minutes into a demo and I realize, oh, you know, this isn't what I thought it was. And I, and then I, I'm, I don't, I feel bad stopping them. And then we're, we're there for another 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, no. So try to make your, uh, either make your, your demos short or do check-ins. Is this, mm -hmm. is this what you thought it was? Is this, uh, does this sound like this would be a good fit for your company as you're going through? So get them nodding a lot or, or to check out or to say, you know, no, no, this isn't what, this isn't for me. So anyway, so that's, uh, uh, so set up your, your booth that way. Everyone can be a greeter, but you're going to have different personalities. If you have multiple people on your staff, you might have some people who are very outgoing, have no problem engaging people. And then other people who they would much rather be sitting in the corner, you know, let me know if you need me <laughs> type of people. Yeah. So utilize their skill sets, their value, their personality types to the best of, of their abilities. And then they will their energy will, will rise up as long as mm -hmm. if they're not put into areas that they feel uncomfortable. So guide them through and have it know that, okay, step one, we're, we're engaging. Step two, we're capturing information. Step three, we're going to ask more questions about their company and their needs. Step four, we're going to start talking about our our product, our service, our company in relation to the information they gave you. So guy, massage that so that you're giving them real good, valid information. Mm -hmm. And then do they need a demo? Okay. So we're, we're put, putting them down that path. And then finally, after you've, you've got, given them the information and now you're, you're coming back around, 
And now you're going to, you're, you need to set the follow up right there, or at least the expectation of a follow up right there at the booth. Uh, and make sure that you are the person who is in charge of that. Do not leave it to the, the attendees who's, who's, even if they're excited, Oh, I, I can't wait to get back in touch with you. That may never happen. <laughs> that may yeah. never happen. Yeah. So make sure that you are the one. So guide them through that journey, but have it mapped out ahead of time. Do not do this on the fly. Make sure you are very strategic. Get with your team uh, to figure that out. Who's going to play what roles and then guide them through that journey when you're, when you're mm -hmm. there on the show floor. That's great. I love it. Th those are really <laughs> solid tips. All four of those, um, you know, the, the biggest mistakes, um, you know, that I see is at trade shows. Well, number one is, Coming from a planning perspective, a lot goes into building a trade show booth, you know, mm -hmm. between, you know, working with vendors, vetting them out, figuring out what you want your aesthetic to be and your branding and your logo and the backdrop and how big you want the booth or how small it's going to be, you know, all these sorts of things. And then you're, you're thinking about swag. Well, I wonder what our competitors are doing. And, um, and then there's all the different types of food. I mean, I was amazed this past year with trade shows all the different options between all the food vendors that were there on site, all the things that you could do, popcorn machines, of course, yeah. you know, uh, baristas and, you know, local companies coming in like donut walls. I mean, you name it. It's out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, the coolest thing I saw last year at a trade show that really got uh, everyone in line was um, there was a booth and they had a local oyster kind of restaurant company come out um, and they were shucking the oysters right there wow. live. The guy was there. He was talking about how they catch it locally and it's all fresh. I mean, they had it, boxes of them just flown in because they were from out of state. It was just really cool. And yeah. um, that was one of my favorite things. I, I also love oysters, but I never <laughs> seen that before. You know? I can honestly um, say I've never seen oysters before, but you are so right. I love the experience that food brings in because it engages so many senses. And if you have a good person there, you have a, uh, whether that's a barista making a latte or someone shucking oysters who knows who's a good talker, they engage the people and their people are interested and they stick around not yeah. for the story. It's not just standing in line and someone hands you something. It is really getting them immersed into your brand, into the story. Uh, love that. Love that. Yeah. There's just so many different things that, that I saw across. I mean, hundreds of booths that were just really unique um, and exciting. That's what makes me even more looking forward to going to, you know, trade shows and seeing what's out there this year. But, um, you know, what things have you seen lately at trade shows just around trends or things that we were just talking about gathering, getting people to your booth? I mean, besides, you know, just the, the usual, hey, this, this is old school, but having candy, I know it's a small thing, <laughs> a big old candy bowl. Um, you know, we actually did some sort of, um, it was, it was just a test in my mind. Um, just to just con like consumer testing, if you will. Uh, I had two bowls at one of our, um, booths. One was chocolate. I mean, every kind of chocolate, I mean, you name it. Okay. That's more of my type of booth, uh, and, and, you know, booth to go to towards that bowl. And then the second bowl was just nostalgic candy. I mean, there were oh. foreheads, airheads, you know, taffy, all the sticky kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing that the people that would go towards that bowl, it just reminded them of like childhood and all of them yeah. would say, oh my gosh, I haven't had this candy in 15 years. And that just got the car. I know it's so funny, but it just really got conversation started that you just weren't expecting. People were just drawn, you know, straight to the candy. And then we would just have this conversation and turns out a lot of them were qualified leads and it was just a fun way to get the conversation started. But, um, any kind of interesting stories or things, um, anecdotes that you could share? Well, I, I love what you said about, uh, about food. Food is, is, is a huge thing for me, uh, mm -hmm. as well. And, and food engages in, in so many different ways. But uh, the one thing, if I, if I talk to all of my, my friends that have small 10 by 10 boots, <laughs> if you're at one of those big shows where you've got a couple of bellwether, uh, anchor, <laughs> exhibitors that were with the, you know, double decker 40 by 40 booth. And then, but then you're, you know, you have aisles and aisles of these 10 by 10 booths. Number one, do something that will engage the senses. And so that 
something so simple is use lighting. So many different, so many booths are not lit. Yeah, they're they're inviting and they they have great graphics and everything, but they're not lit up. Just by adding some accent lighting, or or colored lighting, or some lighting in some way can make your booth really pop. All the way down the aisle, people can see something something different there. So that's one thing. Uh, going back to food one more time, engaging uh, the smells, sounds. If you have a barista, you, you hear that classic uh, uh, espresso machine maker uh, doing its job. The smells of, of fresh baked cookies or popcorn, uh, the the sound of, of someone giving a demonstration, you know, or even a clicking prize wheel, you know, things like that will definitely draw people in, even could be even from a uh, one or two aisles over if it's done correctly. Uh, so I, I love that. And I think that is, that's fantastic. Getting people different experiences. I've seen a lot of VR, people wearing VR headsets, you know, and, and experiencing things in a whole new way. And, uh, it, it could be a demo of, you know, if you have an event space or, or something like that where you immerse people into your, your space or some aspect of your business or even if you're using VR as a as a game <laughs> that uh, you have people try to win prizes, be the top scorer of the day is always fun. Uh, but what, if you're doing something that is drawing a, a small crowd or a line of people, they're waiting to get that latte, they're waiting to get their oyster, whatever it is, make sure you're taking advantage of that. Don't just have them come up, get their thing and walk away. You have to take advantage. If you're investing the money, because that's a lot of money to have those oysters there. I can't even imagine the, the price tag on that. But you've got a line of people that are waiting, and some of them could be waiting 15, 20 minutes or something like that. Have people start going down the line. Welcome. So glad you're here. I'm excited to get you an oyster. Let me grab, let me scan your badge. Let me let me ask you a few questions. It could be that that front of the front end of their the uh, booth flow, the attendee journey, where you're starting to capture information about these people. See who's qualified, who's not qualified. See who you can. Hey, after you get your oyster, we want to talk to you. We want to give you a quick demo. Whatever that next step is down the journey, but take advantage of that. Uh, I, Love seeing that, and I don't see it often enough. I see big lines of people, and they come, they get their their you know a gourmet hot cocoa. They get the. I was just in um, Louisville, Kentucky for uh, for IAEE's Expo Expo, and there was a bourbon tasting booth, and so they get their bourbon and and then they leave. You know, so what are we doing to take advantage of those lines? Make sure you're not just letting them come up and leave and hoping that they got the nice, warm and fuzzy and remembered your brand because most people won't. <laughs> they, they'll remember the oyster. But, you know, do you remember the brand, the, the boot that was handing that oyster out that don't leave that to chance? Make sure they remember and, uh, and they capture that info. Yeah, th those are great. Um yeah, great tips there. I, I really appreciate that. And it, it's so fun to talk about, you know, each you know trade show brings a different experience because as a trade show booth holder, you're most likely going to be in a different area, different section. You may see at, at some point if you go to a lot of trade shows and you set up and all that, you're going to see a lot of the same people, you know, mm -hmm. working some yep. of the same booths. So the relationships, we don't talk about that um, often enough too, is the relationships that you start to build as well with like, you know, the, the vendors around you um, and, you know, competitors too. I mean, it, it's, it's always a thing where it needs to be friendly and, um, you know, both sides, both ways. Yeah. And you, you see that, you see that a lot more, you know, I think, um, definitely after, you know, 2020 people just wanted to get back to trade shows. They uh, wanted to get back yes. to meeting other people, no matter who it was. And I really love that it's, it's made, you know, this community, especially with event planners and organizers come, come together and talk about what they're seeing, you know, virtually what they're seeing with hybrid events and person events and the conversations that happen at trade shows these days, I think are really, uh, really special. Um, and it's easy also to know if you have a qualified lead much easier these days than not, because people kind of know what they want, um, after, you know, three years now of planning different types of use cases and different ways, just specifically talking about event planners in general. Um, it's just nice to, to have conversations that, you know, have more of that flow that we talked about and people know what they want, but they're also open to a lot of, of new, you know, technology and offerings and 
people just want to have conversations for the most part these days. And I, I really appreciate that. And I like seeing that. That was one of the other, you know, trends that I saw. People just were, you know, having conversations about not even what, you know, uh, people, booth holders were, were selling or trying to get the message out there. They were just having really good heart to heart conversations. So that, that yeah. was, I don't know if you see a lot more oh. of that going on. I sure did. I, I have. It, it was so good to see. And like you said, I think people were just so happy to be in person, just to be able to see their friends. <laughs> Maybe, and I know for me, it was people that I have talked to many times, been on Zoom call after Zoom call with, but we'd never met in person. Then it was like, ah, and hugs. And, and it was like yeah. meeting an old friend that you haven't seen in such a long time. It was fantastic. And I saw so much of that. And I think especially, and I can't speak for every industry, but I know in the trade show industry, in the event industry, people have such a passion for for the events and for the experience and for the community. And I think they were just so happy and so friendly. And so I, everything that you said earlier about the networking, we're seeing more of that. And if you're not taking advantage of all the networking that, you know, not just the networking events, but just turning to your next door neighbor, the booth next door and introducing yourself and finding out ask them, you know, what do you guys do? Tell me, I've never heard of your company or, oh, wow, what, what are you doing this year? I've seen you last year. Learn about them, network. And, and what you said also about the friendly competition, so important. Go meet your competitors. Don't just go spy on them. Do that. <laughs> do, do that, of course. <laughs> but go meet them and introduce yourself. Hey, I'm from I'm Jim from Trade Show University, and and uh, yeah, I know you have a competing podcast or whatever the case is. And go just talk to them. I have had clients that have gotten deals with competitors that said, "Oh my gosh, you know, we we just got this huge." got this huge order and we can't fulfill the whole thing. Would you guys, would you be open to doing some, uh, some, uh, you know, uh, subcontracting for us, you know, and seeing competitors come together in a friendly way because they came together as friends and were and opened up that opportunity. So mm -hmm. take advantage of that. People, people want to help. They want to be friendly. And they, uh, I think we want to help each other. You know, if there's, as someone told me early in my career, there's enough business for everybody out there. Don't think that you have to be the only one and that you have to sabotage somebody else in order to get the business. No, there's plenty of business for everybody. So yeah, mm -hmm. be that friendly competitor. I love that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I know we've talked a lot about trade shows, specifically in-person trade shows. Mm -hmm. You know, with what we do on a daily basis for customers, we do a lot of virtual events, of course, hybrid events yeah. in person. So let's talk for just a couple minutes before we end the podcast um, about um, any type of you know tips that you might have for you know booth holders managing booths virtually, where they can really get out there because it, it's a different it's a different type of, oh, of yes. you know game, right? I mean. I mean, when you are in person, you kind of have them in the palm of your hand. But when you're virtual, you got to work 100% harder to get them to stay in your booth chat, to go on a live video chat with you. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about that for just a minute. Do you have any tips that could help, you know, booth reps kind of really grab attention virtually? Because they, they don't have that candy bowl that they're holding out. You want right. to, you, you know. You want to step inside and you know get some swag here. It's a completely different ballpark. So let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, I, that's a, that's a great point, and it, it can be very frustrating for for people. I would say the first, my first tip for any virtual event is know the platform, get to know it inside yeah. and out. Work with your vendor to give you mm -hmm. make sure you have all your questions answered. Okay, how do I engage with people? How do I know who's in my booth? How do I do this? How do I do that? And get every question answered that you could possibly think of, and then and make sure your whole team, whoever's working that that mm -hmm. uh, virtual event, that they know exactly how to do that. And then I would go back to what we already talked about: is that in engagement. Have that quick question that gets people engaged and start them down the journey, so you can get to the point where, hey, do you, do you have a minute to jump on a quick Zoom? with me or whatever the, the platform is and and get them engaged that way but but really know the platform and for any for v fairs anyone else who is um 
not not just a platform, but anyone who is running an event, make sure you have those attendee uh, sessions so the attendees know how to use the entire platform. I've this is not so much now, but early on uh, after COVID hit and everything went virtual. I had a lot of people that came to me and said, I just can't do the virtual events. I get frustrated. I, I, I think I'm doing something and I can't engage with people. I don't know what to do. And so make sure you are having those, uh, those sessions with your, not your exhibitors and the attendees invite them in and say, Hey, before you attend next week, we're having a couple of sessions, make it multiple times so that people that can't make one can make another or, or, or just make it available in an evergreen format on video or, uh, that they can go in and they can see exactly how to, how to log in. How do I engage with this in the, in the exhibit? How do I attend a, a workshop or a seminar? How do I, am I allowed to do Q and a, you know, is it, any questions that uh, that you want answered or you want your attendees to know, make sure you make that available. So that's, I think, the number one thing, because uh, not every platform is the same. And if, if you've been on a virtual event and you had a great experience last week, doesn't mean the next virtual event that's being hosted by a different platform is going to give you the same experience or it's going to be laid out the same. And you're thinking you're clicking, why, is, wait, why isn't this working? Because their <laughs> their way to get to a uh, to a engage with somebody is going to be completely different uh, than the last uh, than the last platform you were on. So really get to know that so that you, you cut out all that frustration, you know exactly how to do things. And then think of it like, you know, engaging with somebody and get get to the point where you can do this face to face uh, so that you can really connect with someone because over over a, a chat, okay, it's good, but you can't read the body language. You can't uh, really lock eyes with someone. It, and that's just so, so important. That's the, that's the magic of in-person. But when you're doing a virtual event, take as much uh, opportunity to get to that point as you can. Yeah, and that's the one thing that we, you know, tell organizers and and planners out there who are, you know, conducting events with us is make sure that you really take advantage of the exhibitor training that that we give, you know, each of our project managers gives yeah. to our customers and they kind of push forward to their exhibitors. Super important that the exhibitor feels confident going in to yeah. let's say this use case is a trade show, a virtual trade show. Um, it's super important, um, you know, for the success of their booth and all that they're doing. And, you know, they paid money for the sponsorship to be at this trade show. So you want to set it up to make sure that their success is, yeah. you know, beyond what they imagined. And it's all about um, the training that goes into it leading up to the event and yeah. also making sure that the attendees, like you said, feel comfortable with the platform as well. Navigating big thing that we offer to our walkthrough videos. We can't, you know, shout it enough. Every single event should have some sort of walkthrough video, whether it's someone who's on screen um, kind of leading you through the different areas of the platform or if it's a voiceover happening where the video pops up when you log in, just to mm -hmm. make sure the attendee feels comfortable in knowing where to go next. Um, and also having that, um, you know, show up on the navigation bar where they can go back to it if they want to watch it again and kind of know where, where to go towards the latter half of the day and so forth. That's our, you know, biggest thing here that, that we really believe in. So I'm glad that, that we agree there. Yeah. Platforms is as robust as VFairs. I can guarantee that if someone didn't get educated on all the things that were available to them and how to engage people and how to navigate this whole, this whole event that they'll leave going, wait, we could have done that. Wait, there was a, mm -hmm. there was a, a room where all the people were doing this. Yeah. You got to mm -hmm. know if you don't know, you'll mm -hmm. never know. It's not like where you're at a venue where you can, asks, you know, ask somebody, I mean, sure, you can ask people on, the, on these platforms, but that you just like walk around and you could see things and there's going to be signs. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's much more difficult when, if you don't know everything and there are so, there's so much depth to, to these virtual events now than there used to be. And, and it's just outstanding. Yeah. We think so too, you know, <laughs> um, well, that's super, um, you know, Good to, to hear you say those same same things that I was thinking that you probably were going to say. But, you know, the four steps that you mentioned really does apply. What you're saying is to, you know, trade shows um, in person, virtual, 
hybrid, really all different components of these types of um, you know, uh, events, whether they're happening in person or virtual, can go back to your four steps yeah. of booth flow and uh, engagement. So engage, engage, engage. Absolutely. You know? Engage, capture that information, guide them through the mm-hmm. journey, and then send them off with, with some gifts, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want them to leave with. And especially that, that uh, expectation of a follow-up. And if you, as specific as you could be with follow-up, that's the best. So that they're expecting it and not just going, wait a minute, who are you? What is this? <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, before we end the episode, where can our listeners find you, Jim? Oh, anywhere you listen to podcasts. So Spotify, Apple, uh, Google Podcasts, iHeart, wherever you like listening to podcasts, look for a search for Trade Show University. It's really more than a podcast. It's really a training training tool. Every guest that I bring on, and I have a ton of solo episodes where I'm giving tips and advice for exhibitors and many uh, episodes also for show planners, but I have some amazing, amazing guests that, that bring their expertise. And many of them are like a master class where you're going to learn, you're going to get better, you're going to get better results. And if I, if I may, I want to invite people to uh, to go to my website at tradeshowu.biz, so it's tradeshow, the letter U dot B-I-Z, and sign up for the email newsletter. And when you do that, it's right on the homepage. If you do that, you get access to a free training, a free video training that's not available anywhere else, and that is how to pick the right trade show for you. So if you're wondering, oh, which show do we go to, I break it down, seven questions you need to ask. And this is you know, for all the show planners out there. This gives the, spe- the secret sauce as to how to talk to your attendees and exhibitors to not the attendees, but exhibitors and how to draw them in to become an exhibitor at your show. If you're answering these questions for them. So, uh, so yeah, go to the website, sign up. Awesome. Well, for any <laughs> listeners who haven't checked out your podcast, I've listened to so many episodes and it's, I'm amazed at how many that you've recorded. So kudos to you on that. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I feel like I was just scrolling and all the topics <laughs> were there. I'm, I'm thinking I could just spend, you know, weeks just listening to these. Um, and you're, you have such a good personality, like a fun personality where, you know, I can just like feel your smile across uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate. I love it. As you, as you know, I I love it. As I said at the beginning, and and to help with the with the scrolling, I do have a a page on the website that's a trade show. You, if you click on episodes, once you get to the website, I have every episode broken by category. So if you're looking at episodes for marketing or for data or for even fitness and health or strategy or tips, so you can go down there. Or if you're looking for certain guests, you can click down. All the guests are listed at the bottom of the page. So make it very simple instead of being on Apple and scroll, 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 trying to find that right thing. And you can do a search too, if you're searching for a very specific topic. So one more, one more quick plug in there. Perfect. Yeah. Well, um, all you planners and organizers, anyone listening, definitely go and check out his podcast. And Jim, thank you so much for being on this episode. I really appreciate it. It's been a blast talking to you about booth flow and all things trade shows. This has been so much fun. Well, I have a blast and I, I hope everyone else did as well. I thank you I, really for the opportunity. This is, this, it's an honor, really. I love, I love talking about this, but uh, being on your podcast is something special. So I really appreciate that. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that as well. And many thanks to everyone out there tuning in and listening to this podcast. We have many more to come. This is the beginning of 2023. So uh, stay tuned. So many amazing guests you know, coming your way this year. Uh, if you're interested in chatting with us here at VFairs, please reach out to us and email us at sales at vfairs.com. We're happy to hear from you. And until the next episode, peace, love, events. Take care, y'all. <laughs> Bye.